Jessica Tandy and Hume Cronin in The Marriage. With the conviction that marriage remains the most popular domestic arrangement between friendly people, NBC takes pleasure in presenting one of the most distinguished couples of the American theater, Jessica Tandy and Hume Cronin, transcribed as Liz and Ben Marriott in The Love and Laughter of the Marriage. I read an article the other day by one of the British mountain climbers who conquered Everest. He said that hardship, strain, and great tension bring to the surface inner strength and weakness of character. Now, I've always thought that a 1040 income tax form had the same effect. There's something about the Bureau of Internal Revenue that brings out the hidden assets and liabilities in everyone. I saw that again a little while ago when Liz's mother and I were filling out her tax form one evening. Liz is helping Pete with his homework with one ear in our direction. You know, Ben, I, I shouldn't trouble you with my income tax, but I, I seem to have misplaced my bifocals. Have you ever noticed that anything in your favor is printed in such small type? You always seem to lose those glasses around March 5th, Mother. Do I, dear? That's interesting, isn't it? Mom, how can you subtract eight from two? You have to borrow, Pete. You know that. Oh. Abby. On these business expenses... They're my favorite, you know, Ben. Medical expenses and charity contributions are so cut and dried somehow, but business deductions have such interesting scope. You certainly seem to, Abby. I don't think I've ever seen deductions with more scope. Why, thank you, Ben. Pete, put your shoes back on. If you count on your toes, you'll never learn to subtract. I wasn't counting. I was just wiggling. Mm -hmm. This item, Abby... Family tree, $25. Oh, yes, that's one of my favorites. Is it a business expense? Mm-hmm. I applied to join the Daughters of the American Revolution, and I had to supply a genealogy. But, Mother, our family didn't come over till after the War of 1812. Well, I know we always believed that, but I was hoping to find a slight irregularity, oh, you know. Mother. Well, don't worry, dear. They turned out to be depressingly regular, as far back as $25 would take us. But was it a business expense? At the time, yes. I thought a DAR certificate would look very impressive in the antique shop. Very neat, Abby. A bona fide business expense. Oh, Dan, it isn't really. Oh, Pete, you can't add thirds and fifths that way. It's like adding apples and pears. It just isn't done. How about in fruit salad? Oh, never mind now. How about this one, Abby? Travel expense to Danbury, Connecticut. Forty trips. Business expense? Hmm. Now, Mother, you know very well that's your weekends in your house in the country. Of course, dear. Doesn't it make a lovely expense? But you can't call it business, can't you, Ben? Well, I'm always on the lookout for antiques when I go up to the place. That's certainly my business. Well, she can try. Give it a whirl, Abby. Ben, that's ridiculous. Mother, you pick up all your things in auctions right here in New York. Abby. Have you ever actually bought an antique on the road? I picked up a fine ox yoke once. They're very handy for umbrella racks, you know. When was this? About four years ago. Anything more recent? Ben, I don't think you're entering into the spirit of the thing. I may not find anything, but I always have my eye out. I'll be as spirited as you are, Abby, but I can't guarantee it'll hold up. If the examiner agrees with you, fine. Oh, Ben, don't encourage her. It's a perfectly valid reason. I think it's awful. Mm -hmm. Your father used to feel that way. He would never take medical bills off because he always insisted there wasn't anything really wrong with him. But you're supposed to tell the truth on an income tax form. Elizabeth. Well, you can't take your trips to Connecticut as business expenses. It's a pleasure. Yes. Yes, it is. But I don't really think the government would object because I enjoy my business. I understand that Mr. Wilson used to be very happy with General Motors. <laughs> Abby, with a cabinet on your side, they can't touch you. Hmm, can't they? I'm always a little disappointed when I'm not investigated. It seems such a shame to let perfectly good explanations go to waste. Is that all the business expenses? Well, I was thinking of adding another item uh, for depreciation. On what? On me. You mean on you personally? I, of course. I decided that if I could take off wear and tear on a second-hand file cabinet, I certainly should be able to take off a wear and tear on me. 
How did you decide how much you depreciate in a year? Ben, you're not going to let her do that. Oh, it's an attractive thought. But it's ridiculous. Why, dear? I'm certainly depreciating. <laughs> Abby, I don't think you can make this one stick. We can't? No, I'm afraid you're way ahead of your time. Well, why don't we take a chance? We could fight it through to the Supreme Court. Oh, Mother, stop it. Mm. Oh, well, it seems such a shame. I don't think I'll ever get another chance to be a legal precedent. Well, that's about all. I'll figure it up for you tomorrow, Abby. That's sweet of you, Ben. You know, working on your tax is always an educational experience. I wasn't really satisfied with my last year's return. Too much tax? Oh, it wasn't that. I... I just couldn't get it at all interesting. I went over and over, but it, it just didn't seem to come to life at all. Mother, an income tax return is not a work of fiction. Isn't it, dear? <laughs> well, good night, Ben, and thank you. I do have to get home. <laughs> Turning from the more poetic aspects of the Internal Revenue Act of 1953 as amended, I started work on our own tax. By Wednesday night, I'd reached the point of diminishing returns, so I called Liz away from her book. What is it, Ben? Here, will you sign this? Sign what? Right here on this line, under my signature. Well, what is it? Our income tax return. Here, you can use this pen. Did you fill this out yourself, Ben? Of course. I've been working on it for two days. Hmm. What's in it? You know what's in it. Our income, our deduction. What's the matter, Liz? Ben, if I sign this, I'm legally responsible, aren't I? Sure. After this one, you sign the Declaration of Estimated Tax. What's the matter? I'll look it over. What do you mean, you'll look it over? Well, you've always filled forms out and just handed them to me as if I was slightly feeble-minded. If I'm responsible, I want to know what I'm signing. Liz, I made it out myself. That's what I mean. Just what do you mean? I just don't know if I want to sign it at all. I don't think you have the right attitude toward the tax. My attitude is perfectly all right. The way you and Mother get together, you think it was a pair of confidence men getting ready to sell the Secretary of the Treasury the Brooklyn Bridge. Well, that's been done. I don't think it's funny, Ben. Seriously. Your mother takes the right approach to an income tax. She sees it as a form of self-expression, a creative art. Ben, that's ridiculous. Her inspiration comes from Shelley and Coleridge. In Xanadu did Cuba Khan a stately pleasure dome decree used to entertain visiting Venetians, clearly a business expense and fully deductible. Ben, now stop it. I'm not fooling. I don't like it at all. It, it's like... Cheating on an examination on the honor system. The Internal Revenue Department is not exactly the freshman English course at Vassar. No, it's much more serious. It's all right, Liz. Believe me. You can sign it. It's a perfectly legal and correct return. It may be correct, but I don't think it's right. I hate to pull rank on you, darling, but I am a lawyer and I do know tax law. Well, I don't think it's fair to take advantage of that. The ordinary taxpayer can't do it. That's absolute. All right. All right, we'll go over the whole thing item by item. It may take some time, but it only costs 5% penalty for every 30 days delinquency. You know, here you are. Uh, what's this? Entertainment. $350? You know, entertaining clients at home, gifts, theater tickets. You remember that manufacturer of fiber sink gaskets we took to the Copacabana? But that's listed under business expenses. Naturally. But you enjoyed it. What's that got to do with it? You can't say that watching Jimmy Durante at the Copacabana is a business expense. You certainly can. It's mentioned specifically in the instructions. Jimmy Durante? Well, not by name. Durante is implicit. Look, we had dinner out and we went to see Picnic, which you would have gotten tickets for anyway, and then to a nightclub. It just doesn't seem right to try to weasel out of paying for it. Liz, will you stop trying to make a moral issue out of this? Why not? I will not sign an immoral document. Oh, now you're just being stuffy. And you're being unscrupulous. Now, wait a minute. I have as many scruples as anybody. I'm loaded with scruples. Hmm. Liz, believe me, it's perfectly all right. Just sign the form, darling. I'll think about it. You've got to sign it. Not necessarily. I made $700 last year working. I can fire my own form. Oh, no, no, no. You uh, make out your return? 
I'll make out mine. But, but you can't... Look, Liz, with a joint form, you can split income. Individually, you have to share the deductions. It, it, it cost us a couple of hundred dollars. I'll look into it. Liz, I, I'm sorry. I was teasing you. There's nothing immoral about the return. Believe me, it could have been filed by Cotton Mather. Just sign it here, huh? Right here. Look, I'll hold the blotter for you. Liz? I'll look it over. Liz retired into the kitchen with my form and my copy of Your Income Tax by J.K. Lasser. An hour later, she was back. I don't need the book, Ben. You take it. Don't you approve of Mr. Lasser? No. No, I don't think I do. You're consulting someone else? A still, small voice within you? In a way, I am, yes. May I point out that the still, small voice is not likely to be a certified public accountant? Man does not live by certified public accountants alone. Liz, darling, I'm sorry I needled you, really. Let's sign the form, and you can lick the envelope and mail it off. Huh? I'll think it over. Liz held the matter under advisement for several days. On Saturday morning, about 9.30, the doorbell rang. Pete answered it. Hello. Hello. Is your father in, young man? Sure. Come on in. Hmm, thank you. <clears throat> I uh, wonder if I could talk to him. He's in the shower. You want to go in and talk to him? I'll... I'll wait. Is your mother at home? It's her morning. Oh, it is? She's out cold. Oh, Oh, well, oh. Pop and Mom take turns. Um, maybe I'd better go. I, I mean, if she isn't oh, well... Oh, no, she's asleep. It's her turn to sleep late. Oh, oh, I see. Can I help you? I don't think so. I'm from the Bureau of Internal Revenue. Yeah? How about your identification? Yeah, huh? Oh, um, <clears throat> here. Federal Bureau, New York District. All right? It's all right with me. What do you do? Oh, uh, I look at tax records, check returns, uncover fraud. He? Who's out there? A federal man. What? Huh? He wants pop for fraud. Ben, Ben, it's come. Get out of that shower. I guess he'll be out soon. But can I help you in the meantime? I don't think so. Pop and Mom had an argument over the income tax. They did? Are you trying to pump me? No, no, really. Uh... I know. You boys got Al Capone for income tax evasion. Uh, that was before my time. Do you carry a gun? Oh, no. My goodness, no. Well, how about that bulge in your pocket? Bulge? Oh, uh, a Swiss cheese sandwich. My lunch. Oh. Did you ever try it with peanut butter? Is it good? Anything's good with peanut butter. Where's my other shoe? Sam, tuck in your shirt. Oh, how do you do? I'm Mr. Marriott. I'm Mr. Kovac, a Department of Internal Revenue. Don't worry, Pop. I didn't tell him a thing. Peter, you can go and have your breakfast. Okay, Pop. <laughs> Bright little fellow. Pete? <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> Very well informed. <laughs> is he? Well, you know how children are, always exaggerating. What is it, Sam? What is it? Uh, Mr. Kovac, this is Mrs. Marriott. Uh, how do you do? How do you do? Uh, Mr. Kovac's with the Department of Internal Revenue. I knew it. Ah, yes, Mr. Kovac. I'm making a routine check into your 1952 tax return, Mr. Marion. See? A spot check? That's right. <laughs> I'll want to look over your records and check it against the return. Why, certainly. Uh, Mr. Kovac, maybe you can settle something for me. Are you allowed to charge nightclubs and theater as a business expense when you had a perfectly good time and wanted to see the play anyway? Yes, please, I'm sure Mr. Kovac... Well, one other to... point. Can you charge one-fifth of your apartment after business when you only work on a small desk that couldn't be more than three feet square? Liz, I don't think that this is exactly the time for this kind of questioning. Oh, well, why not? I... If it's right, it's right. That's right. And if it oh. isn't, well, let's face it. Liz... Why don't you make Mr. Kovac a cup of coffee in the kitchen? Oh, but I have uh, a... You mo will have a cup of coffee, won't you, Mr. Kovac? Well, no, I... Uh, tea? Uh, cocoa? Post them. No, thanks, really. 
You know, I've told Mrs. Kovac a hundred times that just before March 15th is no time to check last year's return. People are just too, um, emotionally involved. Suppose I come back on Monday. Oh, fine. Or, uh, Tuesday, if that's more convenient to you. Monday will do. That'll give you time to collect all your records, medical payments, state taxes... Receipts for entertainment listed as business expenses? You know. Oh, yes, 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 I know. I'm afraid I'm causing you a lot of trouble. Oh, no, it's all right. <laughs> well, at least we'll both have a nice weekend. <laughs> I want to make one thing clear. Liz is an adult, intelligent, understanding woman. She did not say, I told you so. She put it a little differently. Ben, the mills of the gods grind slowly. All right, all right. What do you think will happen? Nothing. It's just a routine check. I welcome it. Uh Uh-huh. I definitely welcome it. Oh, yes. On Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday, if it's more convenient. I've got nothing to hide. My return's absolutely proper. Then why are they checking it? It's just a routine, dear. It doesn't mean a thing. Could happen to anyone. Where's the tax book? On the table. Absolutely nothing to worry about. Any partnerships, pay deals, payments, penalties. What does it say, dear? Willful making and subscribing to a false return. Felony. $2,000 fine or five years. Or both. Liz, where are last year's council checks? I spent Sunday wading through my 1952 tax records. I had council checks and receipted bills all over the desk. Looked like a five percenter explaining to Congress. The one item I was really stuck on was entertainment. On Sunday night, I went in to see Pete about it. What do you want, Pop? Pete, you remember when you were collecting theater ticket stubs? I used to give them to you every time we went out. That was a long time ago, Pop. I was only a kid. Have you still got them? Gee, I don't know. I need them for the fiscal year 1952. You mean for your income tax? That's right. They might be in the closet. Let's have a look. Have you looked in my closets lately, Pop? (laughs) Beggars can't be choosies. Come on. Oh. Lovely. Where do you think we should start excavating? It won't be up front. How about under this goldfish bowl? That's my space helmet. Look out! It isn't here. Well, we better go deeper. Hey, look, Pop. I lost this last summer. (laughs) Sorry, Pop. It is dusty. Oh, they were in an album, weren't they? I think so. If we don't find them, will they send you up? I don't think so, Pete. Don't take down the hockey stick. What? Oh! I told you not to take down the hockey stick. Peter, just take this space helmet off me, will you? There. You know, Pop, I remember where those ticket stubs are now. Well, where are they? I traded them to Charlie Harris for an autographed picture of Roy Campanella and a sleeper yo-yo. On Monday evening, I faced Mr. Kovac without the ticket stuff. We sat at my desk in the living room and went over the deductions and expenses line by line. Finally, I joined Liz in the kitchen. Well? He's checking it over now. What did he say? Mm, Nothing but, uh uh-huh, and I see... Didn't he ask questions? Oh, yes, yes. He asked questions. Lots of questions. Do you mind if I sit down? Does it look bad? Liz, you have no idea how fraudulent an income tax return looks when you read it over an examiner's shoulder. Any coffee left? It's cold. I'll take it. Black. Then, what'll happen? I don't see how it can be anything more than a 5% penalty. I mean, they can't prove that it wasn't negligence, and it wasn't. What is it if it wasn't negligent? Fraud. Fifty percent. Here's your coffee. Liz, how would you like to make out this year's return? Oh, now, Ben, it can't... I'm not kidding. I don't ever want to go through this again. You were absolutely right. Was I? It just doesn't pay. If you add on fifty percent penalties, 
just doesn't pay. Are you sure you'll be penalized? Well, we'll know in a minute. Liz's coffee's stone cold. You asked for it that way. Oh, and that explains it. Mr. Marriott. <coughs> oh, Ben, Ben, take a paper napkin. <coughs> yes, Mr. Colback. I've examined your return. Yes? Yes? Somehow it always makes me unhappy when I find a discrepancy. Oh, Ben. May I ask you a question? Question? It has to do with the amount of tax. Oh. Mr. Marriott, how much is seven times eight? I can explain everything, Mr. Kovac. You see, seven times eight? There's a popular impression that it's 56. You have it down as 87. I have? The computation of taxes affected. There's an error of $200. 200 Yes. I'll have to report it, of course. Oh, of course. I... You'll probably receive your refund in a few months. Refund? Of course. Your tax is overpaid by $200. Oh, sit down, Ben. Oh, you'd be surprised how many simple errors in arithmetic cost hundreds of dollars. <laughs> I, I guess I would be. It's very sad. Taxpayers all over the country paying more than they should. <laughs> but you've got to have a sense of humor in my job. Oh, of course. Do you know that I can tell a man's character just by checking his tax form? You can? Oh, yes. Yeah. As soon as I saw Mr. Marriott, I said, good tax law, bad arithmetic. Well, do you know what motto is on the wall of my office? No. Of course you don't. <laughs> It's a quotation from Judge Learned Hand. Nobody owes any public duty to pay more than the law demands. Remember that, won't you? Mr. Kovac, I'll remember it. And while you're at it, Mr. Marriott, try to remember that seven times eight is 56. <laughs> We'll be back in a moment. In the meantime, let us extend an invitation on behalf of our stars, Jessica Tandy and Hume Cronin, as well as the National Broadcasting Company, to all of you to drop by next week at this time for another half-hour observation and transcription of the marriage. Written by Ernest Canoy, with Evelyn Barton, heard as Abby, John Gibson as Mr. Kovac, and David Pfeffer as Pete. The marriage is an NBC Radio Network production, directed by Edward King. This is Robert Devon. took that sink gasket man to the nightclub. You got a ticket for parking by a fire plug. Oh, yes, I remember. <laughs> Couldn't that be deductible as a business expense? I'm afraid not, Liz. Good night, dear. Good night, darling. Stewart stars in The Six Shooter following the news on the NBC radio network.